an unidentified flying object. Researcher on a mission with Dr. J. Andy Elias. We are back with a very extraordinary man, someone who I truly, truly respect, someone who has done so much for our nation and so much for the world, someone who has not only served in the United States Navy, but served NASA on the third mission to the moon, being the sixth man on the moon, and also in his golden years, finding noeticsciences.org. Now, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, it is a pleasure to speak to you again. I hope you've had a wonderful new year. And uh, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Uh, China, in the last few months, as you know, has landed a probe on the moon. What do you think that, what's the implications of them getting there before us going back to the moon since we have in the early 70s? Well, I don't find any implications at all. It's that, that's the way technology spread from country to country, from uh, <clears throat> group to group, and uh, it's a normal thing. Do you know why we stopped going to the moon? I know the expenses were high, but some other people say that maybe we were there was other bases on there, maybe Russians, other people say there was extraterrestrials that warned us off. There's just it's all muttered in conspiracy, but I wanted to get direct answer from someone who's been there. I well, I don't uh, know that any of those are true. However, there's a possibility uh, that uh, uh, there there are uh, alien bases or some bases on the back side of the moon that we're not aware of. Uh, there seem to be some photographs there that are telling, but I don't know that anybody really knows what they are. Um, but all of this is just technology and pro progress spreading from group to group as they, uh, as, as their political system and their monetary system allows them to do so. I'm glad you brought brought up the bases on the moon uh, we've spoken to a few people who assume that and as a matter of fact one of your fellow astronauts appeared in a science fiction movie but he played a, a rather serious role it was Buzz Aldrin and he in the movie he played the Transformers movies he played himself and he went to a secret base in somewhere in the United States it wasn't Nevada it wasn't Area 51 and he basically explained to them the reason why we didn't go back because we encountered these bad ETs that warned us. Now, again, this was science fiction, but some people take this as a way to acclimate the public as to what really was happening there. Now, obviously, I don't think he went to the backside, but do you support Buzz Aldrin speaking more openly on subjects like this now? No, I, I do, I'm sorry. Please don't quote me on this, but I simply do not uh, respect Buzz's position on many of these things. No problem at all. Absolutely no problem. Okay, now, when you were on your way home from the moon, on the way back to Earth, something spiritual happened to you that got you on a spiritual path. What what, what, what exactly happened? Do you mind telling everybody? Well, okay, sure. It's just seeing the larger picture, having a perspective that's uh, overwhelmingly powerful, called, like the mountaintop experience or the big picture effect. Uh, that's been going on throughout history. Uh, we have many records of it, and uh, that's what happened to many of us. We, we call it the big picture effect or the overview effect, uh, and we find traces of it in uh, in various cultural cultures throughout ancient history. In Sanskrit, it's called samadhi. In Greek, it's called metanoia. In the Buddhist tradition is Satori, uh, and it's experiencing things, being overwhelmed and experiencing things in a, in a way that makes you see them in a larger perspective. I could imagine just seeing, I remember in a previous interview you said when you were on the moon, you seen the earth in the moon's position where it would have been had you been on the moon, just what an experience that would be, and then being on the ship coming back to the earth just seeing all the stars and the planets i could just imagine what that would do to someone versus someone just looking through a telescope on the ground now you took it one step further and you found an organization to pursue a, a different kind of science is that correct well let, let's uh, 
let's just say that this is a phenomenon that we've observed throughout history in people that have a powerful new experience and uh, are uh, overwhelmed by it, and it has a, it has a name. And, and it's, uh, in these different cultures, it has a name, and uh, uh, that's nothing nothing new here. That uh, once we understand what's happening, it's it, that's what happened. Can you tell the listeners and me in general, I, although I know a little bit, but on the record about noetic sciences and about your organization? Sure. Let's start back to, uh, for over 400 years uh, since the beginning of science. With uh, Let's go back to Marina Descartes in the 1500s when he made the statement that body, mind, physicality, spirituality were different realms of reality that didn't interact. Now, the, what happened with that is uh, it served a noble purpose at the time. It got the Spanish Inquisition off the backs of the intellectuals for burning on, who were burning them at the stakes for disagreeing with the church. Uh, and so that solved that problem. But for uh, 400 years after that, consciousness and mind were not proper subject for science as science arose after Kepler and Newton and the greats of the of that period. <clears throat> and it's only when um, at the end of the 19th century when um, uh, Einstein and um, no. Rosen? I'm trying to remember. I was thinking of another one of the greats at that period. I'm blocking on his name right now. Uh, okay. Tesla? Uh, set, huh? Tesla? No, we're talk- no, we're talk- I'm talking about uh, They'll come to me in just a second. Anyhow, they were setting the ground for uh, quantum mechanics to arrive, and by the 1920s, uh, we had what now we now call quantum mechanics as a very very important part of our of our science. And we know that much of our at the at the bottom of it, awareness uh, as as a molecular level. And uh, as we get up into complexities, into animal species and more uh, into animal species, uh, we call that consciousness. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, instead of, as was initially thought, the universe is made of matter and energy, we now have to say it's matter, energy, and awareness, uh, which includes consciousness. And that's quite different than... Uh, a um, hundred years ago. I'm, so, go ahead. I'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of scientists, specifically at SETI, they try to separate science from spirituality, but you can't. Really, consciousness ties in with, with everything, and I think that's what's prevented us humans from taking that greater leap. Now, in the last 20, 30 years, more yeah. researchers and more scientists are starting to realize the the impact of consciousness and I'm really glad you picked up on it before all of them what what what's the goal of noetic sciences your your organization to teach people Thank about you, consciousness I'm sure I should re-ask your question please. what's the goal of your foundation oh well it was just to bring consciousness into a the awareness that it did, has not had and uh, <clears throat> and to make it a part of our understanding. And I think my Noetic Foundation has done that quite nicely, and it's still happening that uh, we're, we're now, in, as far as I think the number, is about 60, 60 over 60 uh, universities and physics departments around the world that have uh, actively been pursuing consciousness and mind stuff uh, in, in, in their academic work. One great thing that I participated in, which I know you did 20-some years ago when it changed its name, was it was in Australia, maybe New Zealand. At the time, I think it might have been called Subliminal Messaging, Photographic Memory. Now they call this offshoot. It was Richard Welch was the person who founded the, this photographic memory sort of uh, ideal, and it's called Zox Pro now. 
you participated in that. They use you as a spokesman now, as your name saying. Even Dr. Mitchell quoted, quote, I've realized that we only use such a small portion of our brain, which all scientists know this. If we can expand to use 100% of our brain or more than half of it, do you think we could achieve the things that Zox teaches us, such as literally remembering everything in our subconscious, everything we look and photograph, and even getting to the point of telepathy? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand where you're going with your question here. Do you think if we're able to expand our, to use our brain more so than what we're using now, that we could stop linear thinking and start going into areas such as photographic memory and maybe even oh, telepathy? Of course. We can expand our capabilities. We are still uh, very incomplete in our understanding in cosmology, our understanding of how our universe began and all of the capabilities in it. And that will go on for, that should go on for quite some time. I truly respect your foundation, and that's why I'm definitely going to be plugging it in. The link's going to be placed below for everybody to see. Uh, it's noetic, science, noetic org, if I'm not mistaken, is the exact uh, website. But again, I'll place it. I'm going to go back uh, a minute to space. Did you believe that there was extraterrestrial life prior to you being assigned to Apollo 14? Oh, I, I didn't had did not had not all the evidence before Apollo 14. Although I grew up in Roswell, New Mexico, and where that big event took place in 1947, but I had not studied all of the evidence uh, until after my space mission, and then then I started studying it as it became became uh, more known and more popular. I started doing more study in that area. And there's not any question in my mind we've been visited, and the visitors have been coming for quite some time. Dr. Mitchell, when you were, you said you were in high school in, in a previous time in Roswell during this event, but obviously it was such an isolated incident in the, in the sense that the military kept it from the public. But when you returned as a hero, hometown hero, for what you've done for your country and the world and for humankind, people started opening up to you and telling you what happened in Roswell. Isn't that the case? Well, yes, the people in the Roswell Institute who were directly involved or who were descendants of those directly involved, they wanted to tell me about their, their story, and I listened very carefully to all of that. Uh, one other, a couple other questions, and then obviously we'll end it for today. What would you like to see happen with the future of space travel and with what's happening on the moon? Would you like there to see, see our colonizing Mars and, and the moon and, and going and beyond? I mean, obviously everybody would like that, but do you see that as a viable thing that we can happen in the next few decades? I think, we, like everything else, we must uh, continue to develop our understanding and we will develop technologies associated with it. As I pointed out, we really didn't start to understand awareness and consciousness uh, until uh, we invented quantum mechanics at the end of the 19th and end of the 20th century, which showed us that our, <clears throat> that our uh, we call it the sixth sense, it should be our first, our intuition, uh, is really fundamental. It's a fundamental aspect of the way life is put together. And it's only now that we're really coming to terms with all of that. I, I'm glad you brought that up again because I could just imagine in a hundred years from now reading textbooks where there's not five senses, the sixth sense is just, it's there. And like you said, it'll be among the first. Intuition will be before touch, smell, feel. And, and I really like that because that just shows that we are not only understanding what, we're, what we are, we're understanding the universe, nature, everything else. Now let me ask you a couple of final questions about what's going on on Earth right now. As you know, we have climatic changes, we have wars going on, we have the war on terror. If I know you're, you were an astronaut, I know you are a scientist, I know you're studying consciousness, but if you had the ability to influence the president on making any of these changes, what, what would you do if you were president? Well, I think we just have to continue to do the developing. We want a society that 
and that uh, I'd like to see our society get rid of war and killing altogether, uh, using using war technologies as a way of ex- getting our way, when indeed we should be doing it as a matter of uh, uh, understanding and wanting to uh, understand the the civilization that we're in, and to make it a more benign and uh, civil civil lifestyle. And uh, we have a long ways to go. We're still uh, quite eager and caught up in uh, using war, war techniques and to uh, get our way. And that has to be something that hopefully will go away in the century, if not, uh, uh, well, in the century. And the fact is, at the moment, we are not on a sustainable path. We're going to have to learn to do better than we've been doing. Uh, are we going to do ourselves in? Absolutely, Dr. Mitchell. I'm going to.